Hello and welcome back to the Sideline Eye Podcast. We're here for a preview show and we're looking forward to Armagh's Armagh Hurling National League final coming up on Saturday. Uh, joining me to talk about it is their new manager, Terence McNaughton. And as always, this podcast is brought to you in association with McKeever's team where proud suppliers of all Armagh GA merchandise. Terence, thanks very much for coming on the podcast. And as I say, you're looking forward to a league final coming up this weekend. Thanks very much for having me here. It's a nice honour. Uh, yeah, we're looking forward to, to that. We're just about playing games. And Terence, you've only been in the job, you know... Three weeks. Three weeks, so it's a good start for you. Yeah. What, what unbeaten manager? <laughs> yeah. Maybe we should head home. No, yeah. Ah, yeah. It's just getting my feet in, like, uh, reality. Like, what can you do in three weeks? But no, it's, we're focusing on certain things and that. They're just trying to bring my personality to it. Just a wee bit of experience, maybe it's all I can do, really. I suppose give us a bit of a, a background, terms. how did it come about that you're over our man now? I was out walking my dog one morning and I got a phone call from Peter and uh, he asked me, could I have a yarn on And I said, yeah, what about him? He says that the past management team decided to part company and out there and I trained her math earlier on in the year and cushioned all and outgoing manager recommended me and Things led to another, but I thought maybe we'd come down and do a couple of sessions and then I met the county board and we just sit down and had a meeting and it seemed like a nice challenge and it wasn't too long and basically, why not? And then that, that uh, session at the start of the year, of course, no, was that a one-off session yeah. just with the hurry? Yeah, the, the, the outgoing management asked me would I take a session and I took one up in my own place, because no. And how did you find it? Yeah, good. Yeah. Bad morning down at the sea, the wind was blowing and out there, maybe a few of you inlanders got a few shocks about the sea air and <laughs> cushioned all the other than that. Yeah, it went well on out there and I would have knew a few of the players down through the years, like the older ones particularly and out there, but no, it went well and then just, it just seemed to happen and it happened very, very quick. And how difficult is it for the likes of a new manager, you know, maybe not particularly you know, knowledgeable about the Armagh mm-hmm. hurling scene to come in and, you know, take a job in three weeks and you had a, you have a two games already so so soon. Yeah, to be, to be totally honest, I find it very frustrating at times not knowing everybody's name and not knowing the character of the players and that there. It takes a while. The reality is what can you do in a short space of time and just try and get the heads right and just try and get the mentality right. This is the number one thing. That there's no point having conversations with strength and condition or anything like that there. So you can only focus on what you... Can control and it's basically can control the controllables, and that's all I'm trying to do. And get the the controllables, as you say, and get that mentality right. Has that been been difficult for you, or is that no. something? No, it hasn't. To be fair, I I have a very good management team, Molly Lennon and uh, Rory McGrath, and without them, I'd been totally lost. And I'm relying a big time a lot on them for their inside knowledge and that. There, you know, Molly's one of your own. Out there, and I, Rory, I think he claims himself as a down man for some reason, but that's a whole different subject. But uh, no, I'm, I say I have great response from the players. Uh, obviously, it's not perfect what you're seeing at times, but sometimes you can just do what you can. But you know, when you're striving for perfection, the realistic you, you know you're not going to get there, but it's, you have to keep trying and out there, and it's just changing that. But as for the, the the panel, I couldn't ask any more of them at the moment. And bringing in the likes of Maddie and Murray, who obviously know the Armagh club scene, know the Armagh hurling scene yeah. pretty well, um, that has helped you. Was that much well, of a conversation trying to get them in, or did they jump at the no, chance? No, Rory was actually there before he stayed on, and uh, we brought Maddie in for Maddie's knowledge of the team. The like guy I, I wouldn't have had knowledge of was Common and Warwick Sir and Tyrone and these teams and out there. Only number them out because the situation are not on TV a lot, you don't get to see a lot of the games and then obviously I'm an under man so probably from following the team it's going to be under me and that's right but without them I'd be totally lost. And how do you find the, the standard now on drum they're playing in the top tier at the minute? Um Armar just below that they're in three A trying to get out of it obviously this weekend, but how have you found the, the standard at that level? Yeah I think the standard's very good and I think it, it there's not this massive gap that everybody says there is between even Antrim and the top teams and that there. 
it's it's basically everybody teaches the same how to pick a ball, how to strike a ball. All the basics are the same. It's just doing things a wee bit faster and taking the right option a bit more, and that's basically it. And just you know, not come back to type all the time. If you have a system, you play to that system, and you believe in that system, and you go on. And that's really it's basically the pace of the game and that there. Like, but you know, as for the limit, like like. like the Limericks of this world and that there, they've been together three years and, that, and not making excuses for ourselves, but a team takes time to grow. It just doesn't flick a switch and everything's okay. That's not how the real world works. Like It takes time to build on that and it's time to people to get used to you and your standards and your non-negotiables and that sort of thing and how you progress and that there. And that all takes time and weeding things out and you just can't come in with sledgehammer and think you're going to smash everything and everything's going to be okay the next night. That's not how the real world works. Like They're growing men, it's an amateur sport. Like Nobody's giving these guys a holiday then a year or sponsored cars or anything. Like You have to be realistic of where we're at and trying to, to go to the next level, always trying to catch the team in front or the guy in front. That's all you can do. Well, next level for all obviously is promotion. Yeah. And you've got yourselves in a situation now that these are one game away from that. Yeah, we're in the final. Like, like I didn't really understand it. Like, like uh, that there. Like, I know that they lost a couple of games in that prior to me coming in. But, but the, there was common game now, and that there. I was a serious good standard. Like, there was common had a lot of good orders. I wouldn't mind bringing home with me if you know what I mean. And that there, and the same were my like, like we went down into their back door and we showed great character and fought well. It wasn't the perfect game, but. Who has the perfect game? But we've done what we had to do, and we came away with a result, and that's all we can do. And going forward, the Tyrone game, like I know Tyrone, I think the league, I think it's 10, 12 points or something that was in it, not there. But we're going to try and close that gap as best we can and see where it takes us and take every game as we come. And in the group stage of the the league, Ross Coleman and um, Tyrone were the two teams that beat Armagh. You have got one back. Yeah. Is, is there motivation? Obviously, it's a final. There's yeah. no more. No, yeah. needed, but to no, get revenge. No, like, our orders have good pride in themselves, and that they're in, they're in a final, they're in a national final, and that there, and obviously we're going there not to make up numbers, and that there we're going to try and get a result. But every game takes a life of its own, so we'll see where this one goes, and that there, and like I don't make predictions. I, I don't know. I don't know enough about it to be overly confident or overly negative. I'm kind of a behind the eight ball, as the saying goes, and that there, but. I'm happy with what we have done to do it, and that's all I can do is the best that I can do and, and try the best I can do and that's all the players can do and wherever it takes you, it takes you. But I would imagine if Tyrone, you know, like, like Armagh's going to be hard to beat them Sunday or Saturday, sorry. And the likes of yourself coming in, terms, you don't have a big knowledge of Tyrone. Is that maybe a comfort that you can just concentrate on Armagh instead of sort of worrying about Tyrone or is it uncomfortable that, you know, you don't know enough about your opposition? Well, Probably my style of management, my style of coaching would be that anyway. Like I would always control the controllables or like worry about the guy in the mirror sort of thing, you know. Like I like everybody needs to take control of their own situation. Like like, like even from a team point of view, you've no say over what the guy in the left's gonna do, the guy in the right, how dedicated he is, you can only control what you do and I can only control what I do and through the best as I can out there and like like Tyrone have no say over what our ma does and we have no say over what they do so there's no point for, obviously we know I, I would know a few of the Tyrone hurlers and that there but a few and that there is the same in our man. Like, there's good hurlers in both counties and there's no question about that but it all comes down to what happens on the day I'm not sure what your thoughts are on this but a national final been played in Owen Bay um, I know there was a few complaints on Twitter that these hurling finals weren't been played in Croke Park. How do you find that, or does it is it a big deal? No, well, I I don't want to say too much in that, but obviously I would like to see the game of hurling promoted better than it is. Mm-hmm. Like at this level, they, they, the the Tyrone and the, the Armagh fellas deserve the same respect as you would. Like and that, there I know my friend, uh, one of my best friends in GA is managing Derry, and he's not overly pleased about having to go to Fermanagh. Like and. And that there, and that's no disrespect for Mana, but you know, like I know the pets is the minute they're hard to get, and I believe Owen Beg's not in great shape. I've been told that, and that there, but 
like I, th I think we should try and promote the game. Well, if you're going to promote hurling in the so-called weaker counties, we talk about the Tyrones and Armaghs and that and that, you have to try and promote the game better than it is. Try and get as much people there to watch as you can. Try and make that as easy as you can for them to there. Why not a double header somewhere you know, with the two teams and make it easier for two people to travel? Maybe. Maybe on a Saturday night down the floodlights or something like that where it could be more uh, for families to go to it and make it more attractive. There could be more PR work done for the two games. And that is the kind of a great opportunity. They're going to third. There's a big game coming up after. So like, it's incentive for everybody in down to go there because they're going to get the top league final after that to watch Cork and Waterford. And it wouldn't be unfair to something similar to be done with these two games. If I was in charge of Hurling, I would definitely promoted it better than it has been and that's been honest. I suppose there was the opportunity to do that this year because there's so many Ulster teams involved in league finals that sit yeah. down are hoping to get to Division 1 there's Derry as well, Armand Tyrone playing each other and Fermanagh in 3B as well so yeah. there's so many Ulster teams involved this weekend. Yeah well I uh, uh, Derry's involved in Tyrone and Armand who else? And Fermanagh Fermanagh obviously not there like Andrew had a great result last week, so that's two weeks. Ago. It's you know the Ulster teams are getting there, and there's a good chance, as you say, to promote that from Ulster Council. Ulster Council should have been fighting that case. How do we promote this? How do we get all the kids from the country out of game, where it's athletic grounds or Corrigan or Old Beg, whatever? Try and get some simple venue and give it that thing and get it on TV, maybe, and you know get the BBC there or something and try and promote this game a bit better because. It kind of looks a bit, you know, shove it away, get it out of the road, get it over and done with, take a box, move on. To me, they're missing an opportunity to promote that. Like the Down game, that would have been brilliant for all Ulster fans. Like the whole of Ulster wants to see Down do well. And that there in the head to head, the rivalry between our man and Trone, obviously two counties, and then for man as well. Like, they're kind of missing the point here, I think. I think it's. But that, but that goes on all the time. That's not the first year, and that, you know it, it needs locked down. I think. And hopefully, if and when it does change in the coming years, is the strength of hurling maybe going to force a change? Because as we say, there's so many good hurling teams now in Ulster competing in league finals. We've seen Antrim down, hopefully going to Division One next year. So maybe you know the Ulster teams will sort of push that promotion themselves. Well, I think we have to. I think we have to take. Like I've always said, it, the hurling people need to take charge of hurling. The biggest, I'm sitting there mad, so not making me many friends, but the biggest problem for Ulster Hurling is Ulster football. It is the king, it is. You don't come to Armagh and you know, demand the letter of grounds. You know the footballers are going to get it. Mm -hmm. And rightly so. Armagh Hurling is where it is, and Andam Hurling is where it is, and that's the way. But, but we need to take charge of ourselves. We need to get people in there that are going to promote these games. That When we do get a chance to show a bit of in the limelight, to grab that, to seize that, and promote like hurling's not an easy game to coach. Like if you get in a primary school with no to bag of footballs, it's easier to get kids organising out there with hurling like you know, putting the helmets on and all the things and not everybody likes and you get a slap of a stick and all that there. But but like hurling people I think because the, the hurling's a unique thing and it, it, it's in your soul. The reason I'm sitting here because I absolutely love the game. You know, and that doesn't leave you you just don't switch it off like you just don't play for Harden for 23 years and then Mally's and coaching club and out there and then one day they say nah that's it I'm away it's always there it's it's like part of the family nearly it's you know there's times it frustrates the life playing out but it is but I would just love to see genuine thing when I mean know there's people out there trying in every county like like, like, like there's people in our mall that love the Harden as much as I do or as much as anybody in Tipperary or wherever it does and and we kind of feel at times frustrating because we're low in numbers, like, you know, because our male herders is not putting 20,000 into this ground next week. Yeah. You know, that's a fact. But that doesn't mean that them guys are maybe containing their lifestyle and they're trying their best and that there. So try and get them as at a professional level as we can to, to go to that next level, how to compete at that next level. And part of that is getting the young fellas wanting to play for our male. How do we do that? Like, What's the best way to do that? Give them incentives that, you know, it's not a dead rubber, it's not a dead duck, and they can see themselves maybe on TV. It's like, like, like I've seen them all herders, I 
this past two weeks and there's quite a few of them I would love to bring in the car back home to play for my own club or my own county. Like, and that's the reality of it. There's good orders here. There is genuinely good orders. And you know, talking to a you, you don't have, you can spend five minutes conversation with a guy and you know they love the game. And I, I just think that, I know, sure now, I just think there's better ways to promote this if, if Ulster Council grabbed it. And the guy I've been talking with this, well, since Jesus played the left half as the original, <laughs> I don't know, I just seem to feel like a stuck record. And I even hear the likes of the ones coming after him, maybe of influenced about them, the Neil McManus in this world, they're seeing the same stuff I said 25 years ago and like summer down the line we need to hang on and, and I just think first thing we need to do is, and that's no disrespect to football people, I'm not knocking football people, if somebody came up to Glen's and says there's no football, I wouldn't be overly keen on it, mm-hmm. I understand that, I get that, but if, if somebody with a passion for the game is making the decisions and they're coming from the right place, then it's easier to have that conversation with them. Let's promote the game. Let's Derry and Sligo and our man throwing a double header. Let's make it a hurling weekend, a hurling event. You know, have kids and make kids to play at half time and do a wee bit of promotion and give the schools free tickets. If you're going to hold it in Derry, give every kid in Derry free tickets to get in or something. You know, there's ways to do it. Like. And is that is the football the biggest stumbling? Well, it always is. Like, you know, like, the guy's not against football. Yeah. Like, like. If I was a dual player in Armagh and I was in the football palm and the hurling palm, well, you know when you're going to pick. It's the same in Dublin because there's more chance for a limelight success and to be the best you can be in Armagh setup. I'm sure, I don't know the Armagh football setup, but I'm sure Armagh football is a way more professional than that in hurling setup at the moment. You know, yeah. but, but I have to try and, over the next few months, to try and do as professional a job as I can without being unrealistic about the thing. You know, and out there, like, our ma hurlers are not going to compete for an All-Ireland this year. But what's going on, the, minute, the footballers are on my shed of one and Ulster, maybe, and maybe taking a big scalp along the road, and you never know. And that's their goal. Like, and, you know, and that's where we're at at this moment in time. But it doesn't always have to be like that. It doesn't always have to be competing. Like, you know, and and it's it frustrates me at times that sometimes hurling is just let's get a tick a box, get it over and done, get that game on there anywhere. Doesn't matter with the surface, doesn't matter like let, let's be realistic. If Derry Footballers or Sligos were playing a league final, would it be in that ground? Yeah. No chance. Well no no we, yeah. we know the answer to that. Yeah. No, we know the answer to that. But Derry Footballers we know we're gonna bring more of a crowd. I understand the arguments yeah. behind it. But think outside the box, like even if you know like with our Ma T V like you know put the two games on somewhere and make it a f- festival for hurling for a day like. yeah. and it, it's not rocket science like. it'd be easy enough to make it more attractive than it is and it's one of the steps towards that and also championship maybe I know this is sort of been talked about and you know you mentioned Neil McManus there um, I think he had said on the, the GA social that um, they only found out there was no Ulster championship one night at a, a training session or something like it was yeah well <laughs> Well, I was actually manager of the hunting team. Oh, right. And okay. he told me it was no Ulster title. Yeah. I didn't know it was no Ulster title until that night. Yeah. So, and I, tell you, I, I think, you know, but I can understand Ulster Council. There was a few dead rubber games that we were trying to gather up players. There was time of year was played at. Whenever I was hurling Ulster, we were bringing 20,000 to Kaysen, 10, 15, 20,000 to Kaysen. Us and Down were going ahead, ahead. Us and Derry, there were big games because we'd all good teams in. But the thing that we were going on the semi final then, where now you're not. And, but it's still your Ulster title. Like I'm still proud of the Ulster medals I have, mm-hmm. and out there, and, and th- there's no doubt that we raised the standard. Like Down's big game every year was to be to get the scalp of Antrim. They wanted to beat Antrim, you know, and out there, and and we raised their game, and they made us raise our game, and vice versa. And that's the thing. And like if our man and Trum were meeting in an Ulster semi final, it gives a wee bit of bite to it. And, and if you know if Antrim were coming to here to play. You know, if Neil McManus and, and the Anthem team, the Malloys and that, they were lining out against their man there, you know, it's another day, like, and the guy would expect Anthem to win, but there's another day where, you know, you might get caught in that there. Like, I've played there, I've been caught with teams now that you never know, but it creates that, and it gives people another, another, uh, viewing, you know, off what's going on in Ulster Harden, maybe that, you know, and young people coming in out there and planting the seed and, 
and it, it could grow like you know. Do you, do you see it happening? I suppose that's the. I would like to see it happen. I would like to see it happen. I would like to see some kind of a thing like 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 like. It's easy for me to sit here and say that because I know Antrim's the strongest team at this moment in time in Ulster. And if there was an Ulster title, if Antrim was tuned in right play, we would probably win the Ulster title. And that's not been our end, and that's just a fact of life. But down the road, if our man and them want to catch, then they've got to compete against these teams. Like, if you want to be the best, you've got to play the best, you've got to play on a regular basis. You have to set your target to the man in front or the team in front. How do we catch them? And, and that's what you do. And, and it, takes time and you get organised and you raise it and it's not rocket science like like, like I, I've always said that managers and coaches get too much credit and too much blame sometimes it's a lot about the players but if the players get something and I don't know one and all their title give them maybe a weekend in Portugal or something make it attractive make it make it interesting that people buy into it and out there throw it and get it on BBC TV or something create a bit of atmosphere about the whole thing and a bit of bite about it like there's nothing wrong with rivalry. That's what the GA f- is formed on, parochialism. You know? And that rivalry, you get plenty of it, I'm sure, on Saturday. You mean, you mean. Yeah, well, I hope so. Like, that's what it's about. That's what the GA is about. Like, you can see it in the football. And when we were playing, it was the same. And from club to county, no different. Like, we wanted to be down, like, be under no illusion. Like, and whenever we get caught by town, it wasn't nice. Like, and that's... Next year you can back all guns blazing to set the score straight sort of thing. But that's what the cheese is about, like, you know, um, all over Ireland. I suppose, talking about rivalries and stuff, I'm on Trim and Hurlers meet two or three times a year because yeah. they're in the same division, in the Record Cup. Um, I, I suppose it's the league, playing Trim in the league, obviously you want to win it, you want a title, you want promotion. Yeah. But is is the league used as a, as a building block towards the Nicky Record Cup or how do you, how do you see the league? Well, that's a very good question because uh, I uh, I come from a profession where, like, last Sunday was the biggest game on them had because uh, to me that was the most important game on them. If if we won the Joe McDonough Cup and we put down into uh, Division Two, that was failure for us. I think. Like, I think the biggest thing, and it showed if 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 you watch the off the game, it showed them two years on them had in Division One. The difference it makes because I know in my career, like we were in the old division one for about nine years, and that made us close the gap. And that's why we were knocking the door of an all Ireland title for all them years because we were playing against the Kilkenny the tips every day, every Sunday. We were going to Clare's like people won't believe this. Like, I got on a bus to go to Clare knowing we were going to beat Clare or going to beat Waterford, knowing that, and then our maybe t- temporary and them sort of things. And that didn't, as I said, that didn't happen overnight. That took years. That took years to play. Like, I remember I have an all Ireland B medal where we beat London and just beat London, things like that there. But you get a group of players coming and then they believe and then a oh, winner leaders get involved in that there and they, they, they demand standards. Then there's these non negotiables that we talk about arrived and that there. And that's what happened. And Antrim grew over a period of five, six years to where we were knocking the door off an all Ireland. Yeah. You know, but it, it didn't happen overnight, like, you know, and, and the only reason I'd say we got that was because of playing at a higher level. And even myself at minor level, I would have played me minor hurling in Leinster. I don't have an Ulster minor now, but I've, I played in a team at Knock Kilkenny out of All Ireland, and Niall Conn, actually, the footballer, he played for the Dublin team against us that year in 1983, and that, and, and it was just. That group of fellas come through knowing that we beat Lynx to Kilkenny at minor level and that gives us a bit of confidence. You don't realise it. These things happen subconsciously at times. Like you didn't wake up one morning and think, oh, I can now compete for another. These things just develop over a period of time and it grows. And that's why I say a team grows. You can't come in and just flick switches and these things all happen all of a sudden. It grows and grows and then you get a couple of boys by end and they wing more with them, wing more and, and you just change the mentality of a team. And that's what happened. And is that, that's obviously the main goal with Armagh, and as we say, that, that starts with promotion, and then like Armagh have been knocking on the door for so long for promotion on the Nicky Record Cup yeah. as well, so they're there, yeah. you know, it's just maybe the finishing touches need to play. Yeah, well, maybe I, I didn't make my point clear, but the reason I would I would take the league near ahead of Thomas Tyson because 
that gets you to a higher level, playing against a higher level. And I always maintain if you want to play at a higher level, then you've got to go to that level, you know, and and stay up there and maybe take your beatings and learn from it, learn from it. Many a day I went out and and the teams we had was shitty in practice against us in early times in bars and but we gradually, gradually closed the gap and not there and that's what happened. And that's and I think I don't know any other way to do it. I don't know any other way to do it. Like like the gas was holding on them back. You know, because we don't have that that total rivalry or even like if 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 you're in Antrim or you're in Armagh and you want a challenge game, like it's nearly an overnight stay, you know, to go and have a challenge game where if, if Cork won a game, you know, five minutes up the road Zimmerick and twenty minutes up the road's Tipperary or if you're in Tipperary you're surrounded or if you're in Kilkenny over the border is Waterford, you know, the them good quality games and the clubs are doing that all the time, that's what people don't see. All them clubs are playing against all them guys all the time are switching back and forth kind of kind of pre season games and they're they're playing at a higher level and, and that's what you need to do or am I you need to expose them to that next level as much as you possibly can and close that gap, you know, because the lower you get down, the slower the pace gets, you can make mistakes, your touch half and rewrite. Like the way hurling has gone now in my day was one touch straight to the hand. Now if it doesn't go straight to the hand, you're nearly closed down. Like the touch is nearly gone now. You know, and if you fumble the ball, you have no chance. You know, and it just sharpens you up and gets you to think faster under pressure and not there. And that's the difference. Like, like a coach from Kilkenny will come up and teach you to lift the ball the same way as I would, or strike a ball the same way I would, or catch the ball the same way I would. There's no, they don't have any secrets. Like, there's no, like, like for years there, like, people in Austin always thought that men in Kilkenny were six foot six and they were four foot wide and they were gods in heaven, but they're basically just the same as us. And at minor level, there's no, there's no all stars in the minor team out there. They're just kids at 16, 17, 18, and they haven't done a pay on. So why should they do We're both getting taught the same thing. It's just having that, doing that thing at that pace that we get faster and taking a better option when you have the ball, looking up, head up, hurling, we talk about giving the ball out, right? doing the simple things. And it's not rabbit science. Like, I don't care. You can bring Brian Cody up here and he'll say the same things I say. Like, me and Muddy went down one time and spent three days in Kilkenny and we looked at all their development squads and around their schools and we really did end up not there and like, there was nothing really we could home and say, ah, there's a secret. We were in it for three days. That's not happening, like. That's not there. And I I had a lame Sheedy alongside me when the last time of all I brought Sheedy on and other a man who won all Ireland. And to be honest, great man in all ways, but he didn't come with this secret and flick its watch and mid them all Ireland contenders overnight like doesn't work like that. So our our man promotion's the main thing. That's that's the main goal. For our goal. Now, I don't know. See, I can only say from my vote because uh, like I'm taking every match as it comes and trying to prepare for every match as best I can. And I don't know what the goal is. I know our man has won the Nicky Ragger a few times before and a few fans and lost them. Not much I do know, but in my world. If, if I was going to be here next year or next couple of years, I would take promotion ahead of the Nicky Raggett. Yeah. But that's only my own personal view, because I think to, to get the team to the next level, you've got to play that higher standard on a more regular basis. And the higher standard is always a league above you. And the Nicky Raggett Cup then coming up, you, you've sort of got a dry rehearsal of some of these teams yeah. that you're saying you Well, I was only there for two, so like, I wasn't obviously there in the throne game and out there. But no, it, it is like. It, it's another game. Our man won on it. Tyrone won on it. Um, we'll see what happens. Like. And just on Tyrone, I assume you know Mickey McShane fairly fairly well. On yeah, the Mickey's done a great job with Slot Neil. Like they, they are the, the team has passed four or five years in Ulster. Like they are, they are a freaky lot, and they're a nice down hurling team. Like, like I know I keep saying this and keep going on. Like uh, for and it's actually I can see the change now. Like. For the first couple of years, these boys were just athletic. They were footballers playing hurling. That's not the case. These guys can hurl. Like, they're good hurlers. Like, like I would, you know, the machine McGuigan's this world and the Brendan Rogers and, and all the rest, they're smashing the hurling team. Like, you know, I, I was here for the Noy game this year and out there and just showed the character off them again. You know, they can hurl. Like. Um, uh, I'll leave it at this, Terence. Throne, Armada, it's, it's such a big rivalry. Do you think, is there a bite in training because it's Tyrone? Is there, 
you know, as I've said, these teams have met so many no. times recently. I don't get hung up on another team. Like, I think there's a bait and training every night. There has to be a bait. Like, I, my job is to get them out of their comfort zone every single night to come to train and prove. There's only one place you're improving, and that's out of the comfort zone. If you're not, if you're not up for the challenge, then you're not improving. You're not doing right. Like, I, I, we could be playing Rangers. I don't care. You know, you have to concentrate on your own performance and have a bait in your own. Like, have pride in the guy inside the jersey before you've played in the jersey sort of thing. You know? So that game is at half two in Owen Big on Saturday. I oh, wish our Mahers all the best. Um, and hopefully they can get promotion and get um, a trophy on Saturday. And also we wish all the best to the Armagh under 20s who face Donegal in the first round of the championship on Friday evening. And all the club um, teams all the best this weekend as well. Of course the club league action begins this weekend. And we'll be covering all that with much reports, previews and podcasts in the coming weeks. Terence, thanks very much for your time. For no worries. Thank you.